Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and for today's first video we're going to do an update on what is going on in the stratosphere. Now we do have a cold spell going on at the moment and we'll be updating that in our normal video later on today but I did want to do a video dedicated to the stratosphere as we did get the latest ECMWF data yesterday and we have been getting some very interesting GFS runs as well for the potential for a sudden stratospheric warming towards the end of the month. Now it's looking pretty certain and we have been thinking that for the last sort of week or two that we're going to see a stratospheric warming but the severity of that stratospheric warming where will it put the remnants of the polar vortex um, and the time frame of it has been the big uncertainty. Now in the latest updates it's now looking likely we see a major stratospheric warming. Will it be a major sudden stratospheric warming? We will have to see, as officially we need those zonal mean winds to reverse, um, and only around a quarter to maybe a third of ensemble members are showing that at the moment, but both the operational ECMWF and the GFS runs are showing the reversal of the zonal winds, so we can say there is a decent chance now of a sudden stratospheric warming, and pretty much guaranteed chance of a major warming in the stratosphere, and all of that could propagate through the atmosphere and give potentially cold weather through February. Uh, and it could mean that we pretty much stay around average or colder than average for the next six weeks or so, as we've got cold weather around at the moment. As we'll see in the video later today, cold weather looks likely to continue next week, not necessarily freezing cold and snowy, but still average or below average conditions for many. Um, and then as we head into February, we'd start to think we see the impacts of this stratospheric warming, and that could once again turn us a lot colder so today's video will run through what the latest gfs operational showing we'll have a look at what the uh, ensemble members are showing uh, we'll have a look at the zonal mean winds throughout the atmosphere we'll have a look at the ecmwf weekly anomaly charts and the line chart from the ecmwf as well with all the ensemble members on it so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now you can see at the moment we do have a very strong polar vortex um, right as I'm recording this, Tuesday 6am, very strong polar vortex, but there are warmings taking place around Europe and towards Siberia and Alaska. And you can see the polar vortex is a little bit strung out, but it's not doing anything too major with this, and again it will generally be providing pretty strong westerly winds. Now, it has been a lot stronger the last couple of weeks, and these warmings that we are seeing have weakened it, but weakened it towards average. Of course, we want to see it well below average, down, uh, sort of getting obliterated if you want to see any cold weather or any blocking appearing through, uh, through into the atmosphere. So if you run through it, you can see it gets really elongated over the next few days, but it doesn't get demolished. It stays in control. And the one point we have to look to is just north of Svalbard and north of Greenland. That's generally just where the North Pole is. Again, no exact cross here, but that's roughly where the North Pole is. And if we see these reds and pinks get to there, then we will be talking about a major sun stratospheric warming, as that will be reversing the zonal winds above the North Pole. But you can see, even though it's getting strained, the polar vortex, it's still generally over the North Pole to the north of Svalbard, and we are still around minus 70 degrees there. However, as we head towards the end of the month, you can see this major warming getting towards uh, freezing at uh, 10 HPA, a good 70 or 80 degrees above the temperature of the polar vortex. You can see all that cold air is getting shoved away towards North Atlantic, and above the stratosphere, it's starting to warm, gets to maybe minus 40 minus 30, minus 25, right above the North Pole. And that's where majority of the models get to. But it's what happens after that, and whether we see anything major going on, whether we get major warming in. Now you can see the polar vortex responds here. Um, it gets strung out, but it doesn't get completely obliterated, and actually returns slightly for a time above the North Pole. We see a secondary warming, as I said, right at the end of the month here, on the 29th, where temperatures are 5 degrees in the stratosphere, about 80 degrees higher than uh, the polar vortex is. Um, and it completely obliterates the polar vortex. And look at that. Above the North Pole, it gets to around freezing at, uh, at 10 HPA. And you can see the polar vortex is completely displaced over towards northeast Canada and the United Kingdom right towards the end of the run. And it is pretty much disintegrating as we, uh, as we look at this. Now, the one thing I will say with this is this is a displacement event. So you can see the polar vortex is pushed off of the North Pole out towards the mid-latitudes. Now, some people would argue that this uh, displacement event is 
not as favoured towards cold weather, and that a split in the polar vortex where we see these these blues turn into two different blobs either side of the pole. That would be more in line with uh, cold weather towards the UK and Europe. Now, again, it is a bit a bit of an iffy topic there, um, as no one truly knows. We can only look at statistically back and say, okay. Most splits we've seen in the past have produced cold weather, but not all displacements have. It doesn't necessarily mean a displacement wouldn't produce cold weather, um, and it doesn't necessarily mean a split will give cold weather either. It's just uh, statistically looking back in time over the past few decades, we can say that. Um, but some runs have shown a split, so we can't say anything for too certain. And again, this is the extended range, but in the stratosphere, normally the extended range is generally reliable for the rough theme. Uh, and again, we'll have to see if there is a split in the polar vortex with this. But a substantial warming, and you can see if we put the 10 HPA winds, they are reversing above the uh, North Pole. You can see they should be going, uh, they should be going west east above the North Pole but they are going east to west here, and that's because the polar vortex is now sat around the UK and around the North Atlantic. Now, if we do look at the ensemble members here, you can see the line graph here for the GFS ensemble members. Now, you can see we've been well above average at the moment, and we're generally dropping to around average over the course of the next week. And then we see a substantial drop in the majority of the GFS members, and you can see the CFS members as well going very low as well, and the majority of those showing some, um, uh, at some point, getting below zero degrees. And this is the uh, zonal mean winds. So we were looking at the temperatures there, and this is the zonal mean winds, the strength of the winds um, above the North Pole. Now, you can see here that the majority of the GFS uh, members are getting below 20 meters per second, which is five degrees below average, uh, sorry, five meters per second below average, uh, and many are getting down towards 10, five meters per second, and quite a few are even touching on zero and perhaps we'd see over the next few days as this updates more go down towards zero as it's right it is right at the extended range when the, the zonal mean winds do reverse so again majority of the gfs on solar members are showing a major warming a big weakening in those zonal mean winds and some as i said maybe a third or a quarter are getting down towards zero meters per second down towards that uh, sudden stratospheric warming level um, and we'll have to see exactly what happens with that now if you look at this uh, chart here which is showing the slice through the atmosphere for the latest GFS operational run. Now on the left here you can see the different pressure levels um, on the y-axis all the way to 1 HPA all the way down to 1000 HPA which is at the surface which is towards where our weather takes place and these colours are showing anything yellow, red uh, uh, and sort of pinky red as uh, a strong westerly flow and we'd expect that high up in the atmosphere during the winter with the polar vortex. Anything blues or purples is showing easterly winds, so an east-west flow. Uh, again, we'd expect to see fluctuations at the surface because, of course, we see low pressure, high pressure, giving different wind directions. But up in the stratosphere, you'd expect to see generally westerly flow. Now, you can see at the moment, at least for the next 10 days, we've got, still got a relatively strong westerly flow. But look what happens towards the last few days of January and the first few days of February, a huge area of blue and purple showing wind speeds are going to be 20 um, meters per second towards the easterly direction. Uh, again, probably an extreme uh, GFS run here. Uh, this is the midnight run. Um, but again, it's just showing you that a major sun stratosphere warming would be taking place with this. And you can see through the atmosphere, we don't see these blues propagating yet, but throughout the atmosphere, those zonal wing winds do get a lot weaker. You can see all these yellows through the atmosphere here, all, all they get down to sort of 500 HPA. But in the extended range towards the end of January, start of February, a lot weaker. And again, this would allow high pressure systems to build in, perhaps northerly, easterly winds, more amplification in the jet stream. And of course, we could see major blocking as well. But you expect that to be further into February when we see the, this propagate through the atmosphere. Now, on the right, you can see the anomalies. This shows it even better. Anything red is showing above average westerly winds. Anything in the blue is showing below average westerly winds. And once you get to sufficiently in the blue, you're actually going, of course, to easterly. And you can see at the moment around 10. Uh, 10 to maybe 20 meters per second above average up in the stratosphere and generally sort of uh, oscillating at the surface. You can see we're in a bit of blues at the moment and that's because we've got that Atlantic ridging and we're seeing those northerly winds at the moment. And then as we head towards the weekend and start of next week, we have a brief 
sort of westerly uh, flow. Uh, again, for the UK, we're actually under the higher pressure, so we're not going to be impacted by that too much. And then you can see actually towards the end of the month, we go more of an easterly flow. Um, and again, that just shows um, that there is a bit more blocking appearing over the North Pole um, and the polar vortex is not quite as strong uh, in, the tr in the troposphere. And you can actually see an extended range, look at that, it's high up in the atmosphere, around 50 to maybe 55 metres per second um, below average, and that's actually propagating through the atmosphere already. Many levels are seeing weaker than average zonal mean winds, and if that propagates all the way to the surface, uh, even just a negative uh, 10 or 20 metres per second anomaly, that would provide uh, sufficient uh, blocking and higher pressure to potentially turn the UK quite cold as well. Now, if you finish, but just look at the ECMWF charts. These are the weekly anomalies at 10 HPA. Uh, again, uh, these will show darker reds if we see a sun's stratosphere warming and the blues in, uh, showing uh, where the polar vortex is. Now, you can see major reds, and by the last week of the month into early February, we are completely consumed in darker reds. And you can see slightly uh, more blue down towards the UK, showing the ECMWF mean anomalies. Again, are showing perhaps a displacement event towards the UK, but again, can't say too much about that and generally we see darker reds all the way to the end of the run over the north pole indicating that it looking likely that we do see that we do see uh this uh this high uh, this very warm uh temperatures up in the stratosphere hold on for quite a period of time uh, and potentially give us major blocking as we head through february now, if we finish by looking at the ECMWF line charts, you can see here again, these are the zonal mean winds up in the uh, stratosphere. Very strong at the moment, the red line, the thick red line here is the average for the time of year. We're a good 10 to 15 meters per second above average, but we dropped around average in the next week. And then we drop around 10, maybe 15 meters per second below average from the ensemble mean. And we remain there for the foreseeable future. And as I said, around a third to maybe a quarter go well, well, well below average, and a lot of these are below the zero line, including the operational run there, getting down towards minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 meters per second, um, showing substantial blocking. Uh, and yeah, that would that would be uh, in, in the position of a sudden stratospheric warming producing, yeah, blocking throughout the atmosphere, high pressure throughout the atmosphere, um, and yeah, that could turn us extremely cold. Again, you can see that not all members are on board with it yet, but it is trending that way. And we are starting to see sort of the end of January, start of February as the time where we are expecting this major warming and potentially the major sudden stratospheric warming. Of course, we'll probably do another update on this in a few days time or maybe a week's time when we're nearer the event. Um, but for the time being, this could really shape up February quite significantly. Now, we've still got another couple of weeks of January to get through, but February... Uh, it could be really interesting if this does come off. It could be, uh, again, a month where we do see more cold weather and potentially more significantly cold weather as well with more prolonged blocking um, and potentially very strong easterly or northerly winds. Now, of course, the beast from the east came from a sudden stratospheric warming. It came from a split in the polar vortex, though. So, again, we'll have to see how that does impact it as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Um, I'll keep you updated with what's going on in the stratospheres. It really will shape up uh, the end of winter and potentially even the start of spring as well. Um, and of course, make sure you stay tuned for the video later as we're updating what's going on next week or two, as even in the next week or two, it's remaining pretty cold indeed. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.